Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be learning about ionic bonding. Now, the example of an ionic compound that I'm going to use is sodium chloride, which is also known as table salt. Now, this compound is made up of these two elements, which are sodium and chlorine. And from this dot and cross diagram, you can see that sodium is in group one. Therefore, it has one electron in the outer shell. Now, for sodium to become uh, stable and have complete outer shells, it needs to lose that one electron there. This electron then gets transferred to a chlorine atom, which needs one electron to complete its own shell. And therefore, we end up with a positively charged sodium atom and a negatively charged chloride ion. Now, if I was to zoom into the structure of table salt, I would see something that looks like this. So we have positively charged sodium atoms attracting to negatively charged chloride ions. We call this electrostatic attraction, also known as ionic bonding. Now, the attraction between these two oppositely charged ions is strong. In fact, it's stronger than a covalent bond. And you also have many of these bonds. And this is why we call ionic compounds giant ionic structures, because not only do you have to separate one bond, but you have to separate all of these ionic bonds here. And what this does is that it gives ionic compounds special properties such as high melting points, high boiling points, and also hard crystalline structure. Finally, I want to move on to looking at ionic compounds and how they can conduct electricity. Now, this depends on which state they're in. Now, if they're in solid state, the particles are in a fixed position, so therefore uh, they are quite restricted in their movement and therefore they can't carry charge. However, if we melt an ionic compound or dissolve it in solution, the particles now become free to move around and carry charge and therefore conduct electricity.